Assalamualaikum and good greetings. So today I will be watching another video. Um, this is this is not I think the typical video that I tend to react to, uh, but because I want to watch this. Um, to put in context, basically Liverpool have just become uh, the champion of uh, English Premier League, right? So it has come and after I don't know thirty years, is it? Um, is it 20 or 30 years but for a long time they have been waiting for this moment right so and the manager Jurgen Klopp uh, is, is being mentioned as uh, having the big responsibility of making this happen and this video titled how Jurgen Klopp transformed Liverpool into a billion dollar club right so uh, I'm very interested to, to see this video because I think it it is not just about Liverpool become the champion but it is about how he transformed the club into I don't know money making machine or something which is I'm interested in in terms of financial literacy financial understanding etc so without further ado let's go and watch this video Okay, that is when they win the Champions League, right? When it came to money, Jurgen Klopp said goodbye and went for a walk in the nearby Central Park. Meanwhile, in the office of a law firm on New York's Lexington Avenue, his agent negotiated his new contract. On that 1st October in 2015, the German coach became the head of one of the most famous football clubs in the world, Liverpool FC. Annual salary, at that time around 11 million euros. Klopp had passed the CEO test. Michael Gordon, president of the Fenway Sports Group, US owner of the Liverpool FC, had screened the candidate according to all rules of investment arithmetic. How many points per game does he manage? Okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is it the owner of Liverpool that also own some baseball club or something? If I'm not mistaken, right? So they use algorithm and numbers to compute the probability of of players of managers etc right so i think how many goals do his team score on average how do his results on the pitch relate to the financial possibilities of his employer the figures spoke for club when he saw him in person that day gordon who has earned a fortune in three decades as a hedge fund manager was thrilled it was clear that Jürgen as a football coach was on the same level as a company boss, like a man you would like to trust your company to. Klopp proved him right in 2019. The coach and his team defeated Tottenham Hotspur in the final of the Champions League and won the biggest title in club football. For this achievement, he has been honored as World Coach of the Year 2019 and thus as the most valuable manager football's billion euro business has to offer. Nobody would have expected that I stand here 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 4 years ago probably. In British football, coaches of top clubs are fittingly referred to as managers. In this video, we'll use both terms. You'll later see why not every coach is a manager and which skills turn modern football coaches into managers. Since professional football has become a global business in which the ratings of top clubs reach several billion euros, it has given birth to a new class of top coaches. They plan new stadiums, steal transfers, charm sponsors and investors, think about nutrition, regeneration and youth work, and experiment with new digital tools. Top coaches are now top managers. To increase the value of their clubs, they need all the qualities of a good CEO. Indeed, managers can learn a lot from someone like Klopp. How to motivate people, how to withstand pressure, and increasingly important, how to sell yourself in the best possible way. Ooh, he's on the market. Is he on the market? Now I'm interested. Sure, Klopp is a successful coach. 
The small FS4 Mainz, where he took over the coaching job overnight in 2001 after 11 years as a player in the second division, led Klopp into the Bundesliga. With Borussia Dortmund, he became champion twice and won the German Cup. And in 2013, he even led the club to the final of the Champions League. For his investor, however, the focus is not on goals and victories as a coach, but on how he increases the value of his club as a manager. The value of Liverpool has doubled to 2 billion euros, and after the season of 2018, the value of the players' squad rose to over 1 billion, and thus exceeded the billion euros threshold for the first time. The LFC closed the 2019 financial year with a profit of 46 million euros and unprecedented revenue of almost 600 million. Clubs. The revenue is 600 million. Profit is 46. The rest goes to what? Funding the players. No, revenue. Yeah, revenue is. Top boss John Henry also demands something countable. Mathematical models, with which he bet on the prices of soybeans and other raw materials, have brought the US American a fortune of over 2 billion euros. His love belongs to baseball. So Henry, who is the main shareholder of the Fenway Sports Group, has been buying into baseball teams for more than 30 years. He owns the famous Boston Red Sox. In Liverpool, club is to repeat what FSG succeeded in doing with the Red Sox. Oh yeah, so what's the movie? Is it with Brad Pitt? Uh, is it Brad Pitt? About the is it Moneyball? Uh, where it's about you know the algorithm, the numbers, and yeah. But anyway, this is interesting to me because it linked football. The football side to the money side, right? So, to restructure a traditional but run-down sports company, since its purchase in 2002, the Red Sox has won the World Series more than just one time. The entry price in Liverpool was probably right. When FSG bought into the club in 2010, the club threatened to choke on its debts. FSG only paid 350 million euros. Liverpool is one of the most emotional brands in world football. The city has kept up with the big clubs from Manchester, Madrid or Munich. Mark Kosicke became Klopp's agent in 2007. When he was still working for the sportswear manufacturer Nike, that coach from Mainz suddenly appeared in his office because he wanted to be equipped by the US brand. Difficult, said Kosicke, because with coaches we don't sell sneakers. But it was immediately clear to me that this guy is a modern leader with an uncanny energy and eloquence, Korsika said. Klopp got some equipment, but Korsika also had him give leadership lectures internally at Nike, a huge success. Shortly afterwards, he founded his agency Project B to exclusively advise coaches. Young stars like Julian Nagelsmann and Florian Kohfeldt are among his clients. Whenever he is in Liverpool, he stays overnight with Klopp. Kosika could sell his most important asset as a speaker to a different global corporation every week. Google, Apple, BMW, they all want club. The club now attracts sponsors by giving their top people access to the manager. The CEO of AXA recently made a pilgrimage to club in Liverpool and proudly posted a photo on Twitter. The insurance company has been a club sponsor since 2019. Club's job title is manager. Sounds simple, but means he is in charge of almost everything. Anyway, that is interesting, right? If, because I never see... Normally the players are linked towards... Uh, you know, uh, what, what is it called? Brand endorsement or something? Meaning that you attract big money, right? Um, but managing, that is... I never realized that. Klopp has kept the club focused on himself and at the same time made sure that he doesn't get stuck with details. In Dortmund, he shared the work with the CEO and the sports director. He soon made it clear to his US bosses that he would like to see a similar distribution of roles in Liverpool. They first promoted Michael Edwards to sports director for transfers in 2016. Shortly afterwards, they brought in Peter Moore, ex-top manager of Microsoft and Electronic Arts, to relieve Klopp in business matters. 
Assalamu alaikum, what happened? You joined the webinar, you came, you signed up, but you didn't purchase the program, which means... When he started in Melwood, he was quickly disturbed by the great distance between the players and the service staff. So he memorized the names of all 80 employees who take care of the players. He invited them and the players into the dining room and introduced them to his team one by one. All of them had the duty to help each other to achieve the best for the club, he demanded. Klopp put world stars who earn up to 200,000 euros a week and have a market value of 150 million euros on a par with cooks and masseurs. On a wall in the executive suite Klopp had written, together strong. Klopp once described his philosophy with the sentence, I want the people around me to be happy. And as a manager that also means having confidence in employees. I believe the greatest strength of strong personalities is to surround yourself with people who are stronger than you in certain areas. Club delegates a lot. Back at Some things that I hope to learn <coughs> to have the quality to, to, to do such thing, right? Um, and I think... Um, that that quality is is uh important in many aspects than we sometimes realize right even even if you're watching this on youtube right even success successful youtubers um maybe they started as a person as an individual right be it who oh, mr beast or even pewdiepie i think etc right but at a certain at, at a certain level to go up further they have to have um, some distribution of responsibility, right? So uh, it's no longer themselves that edit the video, etc. Right? So uh, I think if, if 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 you go to Mr. Beast, uh, then the team is even bigger, right? Because so many um, moving component uh, in his production, right? So um, if you if you do not have that skill, uh, and it's normally under not underrated, what do you call it? Meaning, meaning we do not realize that capability in them that becomes successful, that uh, we don't realize that takes skill and and certain kind of leadership quality, right? To, to, to make it happen, to grow to the next level. In Mainz, he had co-trainer Peter Kravitz show self-selected videos during the half-time breaks to make players aware of mistakes. Since then, the tactical genius nicknamed The Eye has been at his side. In 2016, he brought fitness guru Andreas Kornmeier to Liverpool as well as nutrition specialist Mona Nemmer. Coincidence or not, he poached both of them from Bayern Munich, who had bought away Dortmund stars Mario Götze and Robert Lewandowski. Additions such as Kornmeier and Nemmer are as important... <laughs> That's a nice touch. <laughs> Putting that love clip there uh, to make it as you know not sinister but uh, because we know um uh, the player from dortmund tend to get poached by uh by munich anyway because that is a bigger club financially as well uh, of course right but when you can push the the what do you call this backroom staff or something from bayern to liverpool so it's like justice is served or something to club as million dollar transfers. He even described Nemmer's signing as his only world-class transfer. Because he thinks football is more complex, he not only relies on the best feet, but also on the best minds. As drill sergeant, Kornmeier prepares the professionals for the brutal style of play that Klopp demands. Everyone gets his own training plan, depending on what his fitness data reveal. Look at that. And Nemmer makes sure that the stars also eat the best possible food. When Klopp arrived in Melwood, they still had the traditional English breakfast with sausages. Now Nemmer regularly studies the blood values of each player via app and adjusts the diet. The team means everything to Klopp. Uh, that reminds me of uh, Big Sam, is it, right? Sam Allardyce, where he started with Bolton. I think I heard about how many years before. Uh, where he also put uh, emphasis on, on diet, etc. Uh, on that end, to improve the performance on the pitch. Club. That's why he also selects players according to whether they fit in character. 
To have a complete idiot with you just because he can kick a little bit better is totally annoying, Klopp once told a German newspaper. When he wanted to sign midfielder Jorginho Vinaldum, he invited him to his home to get to know him first. The Dutchman was flabbergasted when the future boss wanted to chat about his last holiday instead of football. A dozen nationalities play together at Liverpool. Egyptians, Brazilians, Germans, Spaniards. Such heterogeneous teams are also becoming increasingly common at international companies. They can only be led through a shared goal with a high level of intercultural competence, a strong sense of community and a high level of professional authority. Sophisticated tactics require tools that make... Okay, that is interesting because that is similar to a multinational company, multinational company, or even if you are if you are involved with any NGOs or as a Muslim da'wah movement, etc., right? Where if that movement is beyond the border of a country, right? It 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 cross culture, etc., right? So that kind of leadership is important, I think. Make them easier to learn. Here too, Klopp was ahead of his industry. When he was asked to comment on the games of the national team on German television in 2005, he asked for software that would allow him to analyze scenes directly on the screen, with flexible viewing angles and the ability to draw arrows or lines on the TV image. But there was no such thing. So Klopp convinced the broadcaster to develop one, a condition he could then use it at Mainz, free of charge of course. The man thinks like an entrepreneur. Klopp leads his team with a vision and innovation. He hands over responsibility to those who can do something better than he can, and he is aware of his role in the football business. Coaches are also entertainers. Only if the show on the pitch captivates the audience again and again will football remain one of the best paid entertainment industries in the world. Football is theater, says Klopp. If we don't play a great play, there will only be two people left sitting around at the end. Klopp uses his showmanship strategically. That is interesting philosophy if you think back uh, when Mourinho, Mourinho, Mourinho how, how to pronounce it properly? Mourinho, Mourinho. Uh, because his philosophy about winning, uh, sometimes at the expense of, of you know, theatre just now, right? Performance, right? So. He used the first press conference in Liverpool as a kind of government statement. I'm the normal one, maybe if you want this. <laughs> a saucy distinction from star coach José Mourinho, who had branded himself the special one. As an advertising face, Klopp is one of the most sought-after German celebrities. He already advertised rusk, razors, wallpaper paste, cars and beer. He is expected to earn 1 million euros a year with a German investment advisor. The down-to-earth attitude, which gives Klopp credibility among fans, also makes the commercial side of the football business look less unlikable. Of course, the proceeds are always being maximized. Liverpool even has contracts for jeans, coffee and prams. But with an emotion figure like Klopp at the top, it doesn't stand out as much. Klopp has actually exceeded the target set by his employer. After all, the FSG bosses mainly told him to regularly reach the Champions League in order to stabilize revenues. Maybe he will stay in Liverpool until his retirement, win a few more titles and get a bronze statue at the stadium. Like club icon Bill Shankly, who coached the Reds for 15 years and won six titles. Shankly's statue is engraved with the words, he made the people happy. In Klopp's case, you could add, and the investors too. What do you think makes Jürgen Klopp special besides his football and management skills? Let us know in the comments. We hope you enjoyed this other view of Jürgen Klopp. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more videos like this. Yeah, definitely leaving a like. That is an awesome video, I would think. Um, because it gives perspective beyond football. And actually it gives perspective Meaning the, the most thing that is mentioned here is on the business side, uh, which is interesting because um, sometimes uh, we forget that sports are business, right? So um, anyway, 
uh, my interest in this is not it's not so much on the business and revenue in terms of money, but because um, organization that is involved in business, right? So they have to be um, in such a way that is uh, very how to say greatly run to achieve the target that they have, right? Monetary, of course. But I'm involved in another type of organization that is also aspiring to achieve great things in this world, not monetary, but in terms of the goal itself, it's such a huge goal. And it does have, or it does require many of the aspects that um, when we see big successful company have, uh, it should have those things, managerial skills, etc. How to create a, a, a common goal, common community sense within people of different background, different economic status, different um, cultural background, etc., etc. Right. So that's why I'm interested to see this video in the first place, actually. So it's quite interesting. Um, yeah. What do you think? Um, so I think I'm not sure. I think this is quite long already. So if you are still watching, thank you very much. And I guess see you next time.